Today I'm going to show you 10 more things I wish I had known as a beginner in Final Cut Pro. And once again, it is made possible by my friends over at Epidemic Sound. Make sure you stick around to the end for a super special offer for watching this video. The first thing on this list is make sure you always apply your A-roll into a compound clip or a multicam clip before you start editing it all in your project. So here on my timeline, I have a large mixture of shots of my face and shots of my computer screen. So if I wanted to apply a color correction to one of these clips, I could of course select it, push command six, and then I could go ahead and make my color adjustments. I'm gonna make it look really bad just so you can get a clear idea of what's going on. But now that I've created all of those color corrections, it's not applied to any of the other cuts. So this shot of me is going to look completely different than this shot. So what I would probably have to do is push command C and then go through and select each of these with command and then push command shift V and paste those effects. But then another problem you run into is now if you want to adjust one of those color corrections down the road, you're gonna have to reapply it to every single clip on your timeline. So if you apply stuff into a compound clip, you can right click on any clip and select new compound clip when you first apply it into your timeline, then you can jump into it. So this is actually a multicam clip, which works exactly the same. But if you double click on this top left, you'll jump inside of the clip. And now you can see how these are one long continuous take. If I apply any changes or effects to this multicam, including for audio, then it's going to apply it across the board. So again, here, I'll just make a very distinct look. So now this shot has that look as well as this shot as well as the next shot. So this can be a massive time saver when you're first starting out in Final Cut Pro. This next tip also has to do with compound clips. So as it stands, I have a compound clip that's got this basic graphic going on. If I double click on it, I can see all of the different layers. If I were to push option and click and drag to duplicate that layer, now I have two compound clips. But the thing is, if I make a change inside of this compound clip, it's going to affect both of these. So if I change this layer over to say subscribe, and then we jump back out, both of these compound clips are going to say subscribe. But sometimes you just wanna copy the compound clip across the board without affecting them if you make a change inside of one. So all I need to do to fix this is select the second compound clip that you've duplicated over, go on up to clip and select reference new parent clip. That's gonna create this brand new compound clip that you can jump inside of, you can change it however you like. So I'll go ahead and just change the tint on this to be bright orange or something like that. So we now have the new parented compound clip as well as the original here and they don't affect each other at all. Have you ever felt like you needed more space in your video inspector? Because working with the scale parameters here is a little bit too claustrophobic. Well, if you come up to the very top, you can double click on this gray bar and that is going to expand the inspector. You can also achieve this with command control four. So depending on if you like keyboard shortcuts, you can do it that way. Again, just double click on this gray bar if you want to expand it or double click on it if you want to shrink it. First time I ever brought HDR footage into Final Cut Pro, I was panicked. And that's because it looked something like this. It was super overexposed and looked nothing like the day I shot it. I wish I had known this from the very beginning, it would have saved me a lot of headache. Now that I have this HDR clip in an SDR project, I need to go over into my effects and just look up HDR. You'll locate the HDR tools effect. We'll go ahead and drag that on. Now we'll change the mode from HDR to Rec. 709 SDR over to HLG to Rec. 709 SDR. And now it's going to look exactly as it looked on the day you shot it. But there's also the possibility that you just wanna work with only HDR clips and you're not working in an SDR project. If you wanna do that, you'll go ahead and select your library, go over to modify and we'll change it to wide gamut HDR. Then we'll select our project, go over to modify, and then change it over to the proper wide game at HDR. I'll just go ahead and do PQ. And now your footage will be properly formatted for an HDR project. Just know that if you ever bring a piece of SDR footage onto your timeline, it's gonna look very dim and you're gonna need to bring it up in post. Oftentimes you're just gonna wanna bring just audio from a clip or just video from a clip. Right now, as it is, if I bring a piece of footage down onto the timeline, I'm going to have to select it and then go and disable the audio if I don't wanna hear it or just lower the volume altogether. And there's a much easier way that's gonna save you some extra time. If you know you only want just audio or just video on your timeline, all you need to do 
is click on this down arrow and select audio only or video only. You can also achieve that with shift two or shift three. And then if you wanna go back to normal, just do shift one. So I'll go ahead and select video only, drag this onto my timeline, and now it will not contain any audio. Before getting into the next tip, I gotta thank my friends over at Epidemic Sound for making this video possible. Now, all of the songs in this video were from Epidemic Sound. They have over 35,000 tracks and 90,000 sound effects, and they're constantly adding to those numbers every single week. Plus, they've made their platform with creators like you and me in mind. In fact, they have this really amazing feature that I love where it suggests tracks based off of your previous downloads. Plus, if there is a track that you really like, but it's not quite working, then there's actually a button to select similar songs to that track so that you can find the exact sound that you're going for. So here is the best part. If you use the code thefinalcutbro 50 at checkout, you're gonna get 50% off the annual personal plan. It supports me as a creator and it also gets you a massive library of really amazing music for your videos on the internet. In my project, I wanted to add a whole bunch of these Twitter handles across the board. So I'll push option, click and drag and just bring that across my entire video. But then I realized at the end that I accidentally misspelled my handle. So what I thought I had to do is go into each one of these titles and rewrite at the Final Cut Bro and then replicate that exact same step a whole bunch of times in my project. But had I known this, it would have saved me so much time. All I need to do is go up to edit Go down to find and replace title text. Then you'll just type in the misspelled word, which was at the final cut toe, and replace it with the proper word, which is at the final cut bro. Now all we need to do is push replace all, and all of these titles that were misspelled will be written out properly. One of the annoying things about slow motion is figuring out how much you need to slow a clip down for it to look proper in your project. So for example, I filmed all these shots at 120 frames per second. Now, after years of experience with video editing, I know that for a 24 timeline, that's gonna be slowed down to 20%. But if I don't wanna have to figure it out, you can actually just select your clip Go on up to the Retime Editor, click this down arrow, and select Automatic Speed. Now, I use this tool so often that I actually set it to a custom keyboard shortcut of Option B. But now, it's automatically figured out that this clip is at 20 frames per second on a 24 timeline with a 120 frame per second clip. But it'll also do it for everything else, like a 30 frame per second clip will be at 80% on a 24 timeline, and a 60 frame per second clip will be at 40%. So the fastest way to convert all your videos over to slow-mo is to just use the automatic speed. A question I receive a ton is why is my library so large? And that is usually because you have two settings enabled on import. If you push command I and go over to the right side, you'll see the create optimized media and create proxy media. You can disable these and this is gonna save you a ton of space. Now it should be noted, if your computer is really slow, you're definitely gonna want proxy media or optimized media. But when your computer generates these files, they can be really, really massive. So I think it's a lot better to create these these files when you know for sure you need them. So go ahead and disable the create optimized media and create proxy media. Then in your project, if you ever need optimized or proxy media, you can right click any clip and then select transcode media. You can then set up your proxy settings. So you could do H.264 at 50% and do okay. But then it's all in your control. You can set up exactly how big your project is going to be and you're not going to overtake all the space that's on your computer. Now this next tip is perfectly in tandem with the last one, and that is at the end of your project, if you wanna shrink it back down to its original size. After rendering out your project a lot or generating a lot of optimized media, it could easily balloon in size. So to fix that, go ahead and go up to file and go down to delete generated clips. You can delete the render files, delete the optimized media, and you can also delete the proxy media. And the best part is it's not deleting any of your original media. So you can always come back to this project and re-edit on it later. One thing that really frustrated me at the beginning of using Final Cut Pro was its animation interface. And if I'm being honest, it hasn't improved a ton, but there are some things you should know that are gonna make your life a lot easier. If you go on over it, and we'll go ahead and click to add a keyframe under our scale parameter, and then I'll create another keyframe by zooming in. Now I've got these two keyframes that are applied that are going to zoom in my video over time. But let's say down the road, I decided that I wasn't really happy with where the zoom is taking place. If you right click on your clip, you can go down to show video animation 
and you can also achieve that with control V. Now what you're gonna see is these keyframe dots that you can click and drag anywhere you want on your timeline. So if you wanted to shrink up the zoom a lot, you could shrink these together and now the zoom is gonna be a lot faster. And here's one last little extra bit of information that you might wanna know. A lot of the time people like to create this cool flickering effect in their videos. So they'll go into the opacity, add a keyframe, move forward a couple frames, drag it to zero, move forward, drag it back up, so on and so forth, which is a viable method. It just takes quite a while. So you could actually right click, go into the video animation inspector and locate your opacity. Now all we need to do is actually click and drag over the portions that we want to go dark and we can actually create these really cool animation keyframes on our opacity really, really fast, saving you a lot of time to pull off that flickering video effect. So that was 10 things I really wish I had known as beginner in Final Cut Pro. 